Your mission is complex. It will require you to use all your skills, but thankfully, you've got your best friends watching your back. Make one mistake though, and it's all over. It's the most dangerous mission of your life, and no, I'm not talking about that one night in Las Vegas. Today on Game Files, we're taking a look at the history of Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon got its start way back in the 90s, even though the first game was published in 2001. Tom Clancy, fresh off making tens of millions of dollars thanks to his novels and the film adaptation of said novels, co-founded Red Storm Entertainment. The company would specialize in developing games based off Clancy's novels, though they developed games outside that brand name as well. And after a couple of releases, they got their first big hit, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. We know what Rainbow Six has become in the years since. 17 games have been made and it remains extremely popular. But after the success of the first game, Redstorm began planning to expand on what Rainbow Six had built with a new franchise. And to do that, they based it off the popular Tom Clancy novel. Nothing. Ghost Recon isn't based off of anything Clancy wrote. Put it one way, it's the beginning of when the Tom Clancy name became more of a brand in the video game industry than anything else. While Red Storm was working on what would become Ghost Recon, the studio was picked up by Ubisoft in August 2000. Work on the game continued, and in 2001, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon hit their shop. In many ways, it's similar to Rainbow Six. It's a tactical shooter where you issue orders to allies, and combat is just as deadly. But whereas Rainbow Six focused on indoor environments, Ghost Recon featured big outdoor environments set against the backdrop of war. It's 2008, ultra-nationalists have taken over the Russian government and are invading Georgia. And it's up to the soldiers of Delta Company, 1st Battalion, 5th Special Forces Group, aka the Ghost, to serve as the first strike group. Weird fact, in 2008, Russia and Georgia did go to war, making Ghost Recon strangely prophetic, even if the cause of the war was completely different. As for the game itself, there's a lot you can do in each mission. You can dictate the rules of engagement, choose the makeup of your squads, and plot out maneuvers to conquer objectives. What's more, there was a multiplayer mode that supported up to 36 players on PC. The Xbox version didn't have as big of a player count, but it is one of the first games to take advantage of the console's robust multiplayer options. The result? It was so successful, Ubisoft's revenues reached record highs thanks to millions of copies sold which helped fund three more expansions, Desert Siege, Island Thunder, and Jungle Storm. The latter was even released for the Nokia N-Gage, which is your yearly reminder that the Taco phone game console actually existed. In 2005, Red Storm followed up Ghost Recon with a console-only sequel, Ghost Recon 2, which itself got an Xbox exclusive expansion. It featured expanded multiplayer options, a couple of new weapons, and a story set in North Korea. That last part is important. Somehow, the North Korean government found out about the game and were pretty ticked off. Red Storm emphasized that the game was about a splinter faction of the North Korean military, but this is a theme that we will be returning to later. At this point, we're at the forefront of a new console generation. The Xbox 360 just released, and the PlayStation 3 is on its way. And wouldn't you know it, Ubisoft and Red Storm were prepared with a new game set in Mexico. Ghost Recon Advanced Warfare hit the PS2, Xbox, and Xbox 360 in March 2006, followed by the PC version a couple months later. Out of all the consoles, the 360 version was most important. It showcased brand new tech while retaining all the tactical features that made Ghost Recon stand out in the first place. Its new cross-com system allowed you to make really cool tactical decisions, such as using a helicopter to take out enemies behind cover. Advanced Warfighter was later followed up by a sequel one year later, and in what was a recurring theme for the franchise, it was promptly slammed by Mexican officials, including the governor of Chihuahua for insulting Mexico and its people. Seriously, this is a weird pattern. It's at this point that Ghost Recon, like any good franchise, proceeded to get a lot of spin-offs, except a lot of them weren't that good. First up was Ghost Recon Predator for the PlayStation Portable, which is a good indicator for how good it was. Hint, uh, it wasn't. Following that up was Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon for the Wii, and like many shooters for the Nintendo console, it was pretty bad. Then we got Ghost Recon Shadow Wars, a turn-based tactics game on the 3DS that is only notable for being a launch game for that console. And then there was Ghost Recon Commander for Facebook that was developed by John Romero. Yes, that John Romero, as in the guy who made Doom. Don't ask me how this came about, I'm just as perplexed as you are. Ending this streak of spin-offs was Ghost Recon Future Soldier. 
Released in 2012, it was the first main entry of the Ghost Recon series in 2007. This would be good, except most of the tactical elements that defined the series were streamlined or removed. Not helping matters was the fact that it was delayed for nearly three years, which isn't a good sign. So it was that Ghost Recon went dormant for nearly five years. A free-to-play game called Phantoms was released in the interim, but it never attracted a big audience. But when Ghost Recon would emerge, it would be in a form unlike anything the series had seen before. Ghost Recon Wildlands featured a gigantic open world that emphasized co-op multiplayer to complete objectives. It's set in Bolivia, and wouldn't you know it, its government got upset over its portrayal as a crumbling narco state, which Bolivia isn't, just to be clear. And despite mixed reviews, it sold over 4 million copies in six months. Which brings us to its sequel, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, starring John Bernthal, but not the adorable dog that was at E3 2019. Ubisoft is moving the franchise to a fictional chain of islands, which means they won't piss off foreign governors this time around. Survival mechanics are at the forefront of the game, and with this latest entry, it looks like Ghost Recon is moving far away from the tactical shooting that defined it in the first place. And you know what? That's not a bad thing. Plenty of shooters, most notably its cousin, Rainbow Six, have taken the mechanics that Ghost Recon pioneered and turned it into something new. Ghost Recon needs to evolve to stay relevant, and time will tell if that change will push it into the forefront of the Tom Clancy brand.